Hey everyone, I have here a LEGO Ninjago Season 12 set. This is the Gamer's Market. This comes with nine minifigures, making it primarily a minifigure pack, but it does also have a few structures that are pretty useful and have a lot of accessories with them. They call this the Gamer's Market because in Season 12, at least as far as we know it so far, the main characters are going to be in this game world, you know, this digital world. And in that world, like in real life, you can buy in-game stuff. So this is a place where you know, it's basically a social space where players would come together and socialize and buy stuff for their characters. This structure, for example, is a weapons stall, a place where you would go to purchase weapons and potentially power-ups for your existing weapons. So some of these items can actually be attached to hilts. So perhaps if you have your own custom specialized hilt, then you can hook things up. But around the back, they have additional things that are not on outward display. And they're just in these simple little stands on the back. So you also get some additional katanas in three colors. You got the red, the medium azure, and the gold. And one that has the dragon hilts already attached to it. This one has the sticker on the back that says item market. But this particular part is obviously focused on just non-essential cosmetic stuff for your avatar. So they have a whole hat rack and an extra one also on the back. This can kind of rotate around in its own space and a nice especially nice inclusion here is a non-broken version of benny's helmet so this is a modern classic space helmet in blue without the broken part on the front got a harry potter uh, world uh, wizarding world piece back here and this is pink zane so that's from very very early it's a, a reference to very very early in the show's history when zane's gi gets accidentally dyed pink and uh, here we get an entire figure of that. So the idea here is that you can become Pink Zane in universe, but that's not intended to be Pink Zane himself. Or it's not intended to be Zane himself. However, it is a full figure, so you can use it as Zane himself if you want. It becomes a kind of cool collectible piece just for us. Full collectible figure, really, for us real people in the real world. Here's how the thing looks from around the back. So, you know, there's really not a lot of focus on the structures in this set. But at least this holds a bunch of accessories and looks pretty decent. The last real build in the set is this, uh, well, it's a Shinto shrine inspired gate or gateway uh, within which you can place a power up that will bear one of the kitanas. So they include the pink kitana with this set. Uh, yeah, this is the largest thing in the set, but it's also probably the least useful. You know, it's, it's really here just to help set the stage and to provide a little bit of background. That is one huge sticker that's applied to that six by six tile piece that's held uh, essentially on its side but the nice thing about that tile is that it is in the teal color so for fans of that color i don't think we've gotten that part before ever in lego's history in that color so that's something new and you know again there's really not that much you can do with this build so moving right into the figures, without further ado, here is that official LEGO Pink Zane. And this is just a beautiful thing because it is 100% fan service. This is the result of the LEGO design team getting together and being like, okay, what have we not made that fans would really get a kick out of? And bam, there you go, Pink Zane. Perfect. Uh, with a couple of exceptions. Folks who have no sense of humor, please brace yourselves. I'm going to say the following 100% tongue in cheek tongue in cheek i tell you okay here we go so this is completely unrealistic because this figure is not pink this figure is magenta or fuchsia magenta is a combination between red and blue pink only has as much blue in it as it has green to raise the value it's a very very pale red so that's wrong secondly as someone who has literally accidentally gotten color into a white Japanese uh, martial arts uniform by washing it with something with color that bled in the washer, I can tell you firsthand that this would not have happened if Kai washed his gi with Zane's. Zane's would have come out a very, very pale pink, not all completely saturated like this and not magenta. Hey, check it out. Harumi is back and she appears to be channeling a little bit of Kill Bill, but then again, Kill Bill was channeling Bruce Lee, so I'm going to say that Harumi is channeling 
Bruce Lee. This is the Bruce Lee version of Harumi, and this hairpiece is rubbery, so it's holding on to the head. I don't want to take the head off. I just want to take the hairpiece off. Get back down on there, you head, you. There we go. Uh, reminds me a little bit of Skylar also with just the color, you know, the, the key to orange color, the flame yellowish orange color. Pretty cool figure, though. Definitely stands out. Definitely something worth saving, you know, a, a collectible. I've seen people lamenting the absence of Nia in season 12, but here's Nia. She's just not looking like a ninja very much. She's looking like uh, she's out there doing some diving, maybe going after some some dangerous man-eating sharks, you know, doing a little, little culling for the sake of safety or something. Uh, well, we will see how this actually works out, how she actually gets used in the in the series, in the season, in the game, <laughs> whatnot. She may actually be acting more like a ninja than the ninja do by, hey, blending in. Imagine that. Ninja that actually don't stand out, that aren't super colorful and jumping all around out in broad daylight. Could actually work out. Then again, this could just be done for fans of the toys and it could just end up being an avatar in game. We shall see. Now, this dude is pretty cool looking. This is Okino. I don't know the significance of this character, but it looks pretty cool. Nice print, you know, basic print, but nice with a good level of detail for the torso. The face works. The top knot is very nice. You know, it's, it's in colors that are sensible. You know, that's a dual molded hairpiece there. As a Chinese style sword though. Who cares? I mean, that's what Ninjago has traditionally been about, mixing Japanese and Chinese influences together. And there's his alternate face. I like this one. This is totally disguised minor coal. Look, he's dual wielding pickaxes. Is that legal? Can you do that? I like it. I like it. He's got his plaid torso, you know, plaid flannel there. Recognizable hairpiece, recognizable eyebrows, of course. But you'd never know it was him because of the stash. Oh, he's been exposed. Hey, tell me, is it just me or is this face printed too high? It looks like it's printed too high to me. And then this character is named Scott. Who is Scott? I do not know who Scott is. But, well, it's a reusable figure for the most part except for his skin tone, which is awkward. Works in the digital universe, won't work in a real life situation. So if you want to use these interesting prints and interesting parts and the dual molded uh, hoodie slash cap part and everything, then you probably want to just change out the face and the hands. There is the face completely unobscured, except for, well, you know, what's printed to obscure his face there. But then here's the other one. So this is his his normal facial expression, I guess. Next up here is Digi J, and there's nothing really special about this one, you know, relative to others from this series. So this is just a full standard, full garb version, fully armed version of a ninja in the Digi form. So the actual game character form with the health bar up above and a couple of katanas on the back as well. Those are in the bright spring green color. Let me take some stuff off so you can see what's underneath. There's that version of the face. It does have the game controller hilt. And there's the other version of the face, as well as the print on the back of the torso, which looks pretty good. This is Richie from the Rat Pack. And he is fully armored up and fully armed up, like I like to see these with the very nice black and red dual molded game controller hilt piece. Very cool. You know, nicely built up weapon. Again, two katanas on the back. And also the health bar, which is showing that he has more health than your typical hero in this series to, you know, add a little extra attention and make it seem like there's a little more difficulty for the good guys. With the main armor piece removed, it doesn't look as formidable, but in my opinion, he does look better than his counterpart, Hausner, the uh, sand green version of a Rat Pack member. And there's the print on the back of that torso. Last and least, this is a fully decked out red visor. Red visors are just the generic random bad guys that have no particular names because they're just massable units. But this one, like I said, is fully set up with everything. He's got the two katanas on the back. Also has a weapon there with 
an apparent optic with the red lightsaber hilt. That, you know, it's always nice to have a weapon that's built up in some way, at least in my opinion. And with a bunch of his accoutrements removed, you can see a lot more that's on this figure with the pretty well done print on the back of the torso. Uh, pretty significant secondary face or primary face, whichever you want, it, want to see it as. But here's the other one that's you know just simpler. But uh, both of them work pretty well. These are pretty well done, I think, pretty nicely detailed for just generic baddies. Finally, spares. This set's got a lot, including four different colors of katanas. That's just a nice little selection there. And then looking at the spent sticker sheet, well, there are far more stickers by number that you don't use than you do use. All the rest are just extras that you can use however you want, wherever you want, whenever you want, including outside of this set, of course. So really, what more can I say about this set? It kind of speaks for itself, wouldn't you say? Um, well, I guess I can talk about value. It's $30 US for that, for nine figures, nine complete figures. $30 works as a price for me for just the figures, maybe with a little bit of stuff on the side, but those builds add some value too. And all the extra accessories definitely add some value. So I have no complaints about this price whatsoever. I love the fact that this exists at all. Just a pack of a bunch of figures that are interesting, including even the fan service special there, you know? Some main characters, some, assu I'm assuming not main characters, returning characters, just cool stuff. Extra accessories, hey, even the the blue uh, classic space, not classic space, helmet, you know, is fan service because it allows us to make non-broken bennies and, you know, and friends and stuff. Uh, all these weapon parts, Fantastic. And it includes a Kitana as well. Some of the stuff maybe not that useful, like I said, like this, you know, some parts of the builds here maybe, but I don't know, at the very least, it's got great parts. Lots of great parts. So yeah, I'm happy with this one. Let me know what you think about it. I, I've got the, uh, the builds for this up. You know, you can see the pure build as usual. You can see the speed build as well. Let me know what you think about the set on the whole. Uh, also, just as a, a separate little thing that's not related to this video in particular, I've seen a number of people saying they don't like it when I do this to show the box up close because it feels weird because I have a wide angle lens here. And serious question, serious question. Don't take offense to this. I would like to know, what would you like me to do instead? Literally, tell me what you would like me to do instead of this because the options are keep it back here with me where it's all tiny you can't see it or buy a new house <laughs> because I've got a very wide area that I need to need to cover here and just you know the way that the dimensions of things work out I would need to to not use a wide angle lens setting here I would need to set the camera back like 10 feet more than it is right now and I just I don't have the space for that. It's completely non-feasible to, to make this whole studio thing work. But let me know if, if that is, if it's truly offensive to the eyes when I do that, when I, you know, when I bring in the box closer to you so that you can actually see the details on it, I don't want to continue to do that. I don't want to, to, you know, to bother too many people with that if it's, if it really messes with folks. So any feedback that you can give me on that separate from anything related to this set, uh, feel free down in the comments. Otherwise, I will move on to the next thing and I will talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.